Byzantium is the new British film with a slightly different take on vampires. I'm here today to talk to the star and director, Gemma Arterton and Neil Jordan to find out more. Hi Gemma, I'm Caroline from Film Club, it's lovely to meet you today. So Byzantium has been described as the first historically accurate vampire film. Do you think this is true? I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> vampires are fictional, so yeah. there, I don't think there is a historically accurate version. Um, I know that Moira Buffini, who wrote it, was very inspired by the traditional vampire mm. stories, and we kind of mishmashed a few kind of f old folk legends yeah. and folklore um, and made our own thing. Well actually Neil, our director, he, he doesn't even like calling them vampires because they don't, they're not typical vampires, they don't have no. fangs, they walk about in the daylight, they don't sleep in crypts and coffins and things. Um, he likes to call them sucreants. Um, and there are so many great um, myths and legends and stories from all over the world. Mm. Um, so we kind of sort of did an amalgamation of all of them, <laughs> made our own. <laughs> You know, the film has a very strong female theme. I mean, you play the mother of Saoirse Ronan's character. How did you two work together to create a mother-daughter relationship? Because you're both very young, so it's quite odd to watch on screen. Yeah, um, the, the relationship's quite complex in that sometimes it's mother-daughter and sometimes it's more sister-sister. And, yeah. um, and uh, actually, uh, Saoirse is very close to her mother and I'm very close to my sister and my mum. And so I think we kind of brought in our own experiences. Oh, there was no work involved at all, really. You know, I mean, they, they did it all themselves. I mean, and they, you know, they're such good actors and the parts were so kind of, you know, the parts were so dynamically written, you know, that there was very little for me to do, really, you know. I took my fee under, actually I didn't get paid for the movie, but anyway, I, it's a pretense, the fact that I directed this film. I just stood there and watched <laughs> and let it happen, you know. What is the process for getting into you know, the mindset of a 200-year-old vampire. I mean, like you said, they're fictional, so how, how do you research and prepare for a role like that? You have to really think about what these people have been doing for 200 mm. years. And so I came up with my own... Um, did a lot of research into, uh, you know, prostitutes from that time, prostitution, um, and, and, and also I decided that maybe she was a singer in music halls, Victoria music halls, and a performer. And it was really actually very enjoyable, that whole you know, really doing a lot of research and um, it, I always love that the most. But then having said that, getting on set, my character was the active one. Um, she's very proactive. She, she doesn't think about her past, mm. actually. She erases it from her memory. Yeah. And so I was, uh, whereas Saoirse's character is much more carrying it around with her. Um, so actually, as much as I did all of that research, I only would allow a little bits to come mm. through, like, you know, singing songs or pieces of costume that maybe she'd carried around for 40 years or, um, and love things like that, very subtle. Um, so, yeah, but it's very fascinating. Uh, uh, that's why, I, uh, one of the reasons I love my job is that you get to, for a short period, really uh, immerse yourself in the history of something yeah. and learn a lot. Mm. I love the fact that it's a British vampire film because I don't, I don't really, I've never really come across that before. Was that something that attracted you to taking part in this project because it's sort of unique in its own way? Didn't Britain write the, the rule book for vampire movies, didn't it? Yeah. Once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wasn't the original, it, you know, the original Dracula was always set in London, wasn't it? It went from Transylvania to the heart of the empire, didn't it? And, you know, so it was, it seemed like, you know, a perfect fit, really. That, these vampires are English, you know, and the contemporary ones kind of could have wandered out of a Mike Lee movie, and the the period ones could have wandered out of you know Pride and Prejudice or something like that. It seemed yeah, it seemed all to work, you know. You're right. There haven't been many British vampire films, especially female centric, yeah. um, and and that was really and I I like anything that sort of pushes the genre. And, and, and develops it somehow, mm. or is, is, is saying something new, uh, or is, is slightly risky. Yeah. Um, so, and also I just always wanted to work with Neil. And, well, you've had a very successful career in television and film. What would be your advice to young people like me that really want to get into the industry? Oh, goodness, you have to uh, just, just be passionate about it, because it's very... Um, it's, you get pulled in every which way and, and there's so much out there and you have to know what you want to say. Excellent, well, thank you, Gemma, for talking thank to us today. You. Thank you. <laughs> Well,
Well, it's been great hearing from Gemma and Neil about their new film. I saw a preview screening of Byzantium and I thought it was brilliant and I really recommend it. See you guys. Thank <laughs> you.